that many of you are now knowing as Sixth Sense device. But the most interesting thing about this particular technology is that you can carry your digital world with you wherever you go with you. But I'm more excited that you can actually take it outside. Rather than getting your camera out of your pocket, you can just do the gesture of taking a photo, and it takes photo for you. Right? And later, I can find a wall anywhere a wall and start browsing these photos. Or maybe, okay, I want to modify this photo a little bit and send it as an email to a friend. And of course, if you don't have any surface, you can start using your palm for simply operation. I'm here, I'm dialing a phone number just using my hand. Yep. The camera is actually not only understanding your hand movements, but interestingly, it's also able to understand what objects you are holding in your hand. What we are doing here is actually, for example, in this case, the book cover is matched with so many thousands of, or maybe millions of books online and checking out which book it is. Once it has that information, it finds out more reviews about that, or maybe uh, New York Times had a sound over you on that, so you can actually hear on a physical in book as a review of a sound. Gave a famous talk at Harvard University. This was Thank Obama's uh, last visit uh, last week Thank to you, MIT. MIT. And in particular, I want to thank two outstanding uh, MIT So I was seeing the live of his talk outside uh, in just a newspaper. Your newspaper will show you live of your weather information rather than having updated like a, you have to check your computer in order to do that, right? <laughs> when I'm going back, I can just use my boarding pass and to check, uh, oh, my flight has been how much delayed? Because at that particular time, I'm not feeling of opening my iPhone and checking out a particular icon. And I think this technology will not only change the way, <laughs> yes, it will change the way we interact with people also, not only the physical world. The fun part is like I'm going to Boston Metro and playing Pong game inside the train on, on the ground, right? And I think the imagination is the only limit of what you can think of when this kind of technology merging with the real that life. To a piece of paper, any paper that you found around. So now this, the sound of the touch is exactly getting me when exactly I'm touching the paper. But the camera is actually tracking where my fingers are moving. You can, of course, watch movies. Good afternoon. My name is Russell, and I am a wilderness explorer in Tribe 54. And you can, of course, play games. Uh, here the camera is actually understanding how you're holding the paper and playing the car racing game. Many of you already must have thought, okay, you can browse, yeah. Of course, you can browse uh, to any, any website. So you can do all sort of computing on a piece of paper wherever you need it. So, but more interestingly, I'm interested that how we can take that in a more dynamic way. When I come back to my desk, I can just pinch that information back to my desktop so that I can use my, my full-size computer. And why only computers? We can, we can just play with papers. Like paper world is interesting uh, to play with. So here I'm taking a part of a document and putting over here the second part of a, from second place. And I'm actually modifying the information that I have over there. Yeah. And then I'm saying, okay, let's, this is, this looks nice. Let me print it out that thing. So I have a now printout of that thing. And now, so the, the workflow is more intuitive the way that we used to do before, maybe, 20 years back, rather than now switching between these two worlds. So as a last thought, I think that integrating information to our everyday objects will not only help us to get rid of the digital divide, the gap between these two worlds, but will also help us in some way. And it will actually help us not end up being machines sitting in front of another machines. So that's all. Thank you. <laughs>